and your Pacasanera, your host. Welcome. We are recording in Oklahoma City because we came to meet an amazing veteran, Jessica Rose. And we're going to let her tell you what she does for the community and her own words, all the ways that she's moving, literally the ways that, that she's impacting our community by having the conversation that sometimes in society we're so afraid to have. Hi, my name is Jessica Rose Johnson and I'm the owner of Rosebud Consulting where I do trainings, speaking engagements, and advocacy work around suicide and overdose prevention, specifically among service members, veterans, and their families. I'm also a rowing coach for U.S. Rowing's Freedom Rose program, which is a Department of Veterans Affairs grant in which it allows veterans to come out and get that therapeutic recovery through water and peer support and also that bit of athletic and competition back in uh, different environments. Can you tell us uh, why? Why do you start it? doing all this <laughs> so about six years ago now I actually ended in suicide prevention on accident I have a master's degree in crime intelligence analysis and religion and culture so I like to joke that I love people and I love research so I was offered a job after working in the veterans homeless space for a while they said hey uh, how about you come work over here I said, okay, not really asking what the job was, just knowing someone who worked there. And uh, I said, uh, let's do it. I applied for the job realizing, oh, it's a suicide prevention program manager. Didn't really know anything about suicide prevention at the time, but again, loving people, loving research. I just dove in and I really found a passion for it because my whole life, I knew what it felt like to be alone, not have a lot of friends growing up. And I thought, wow, suicide prevention is really just teaching people to treat other people like humans. Like this is, this is easy. I, I love talking to people and, and I love loving on people. So I just kind of fell into it, dove into it, and just kept running with it. I, after that, I worked for the Department of Mental Health on the opiate overdose. So that's where I got introduced to overdose deaths. And there's a lot of correlation between suicides and overdoses. So just finding a, a real passion on just saving people's lives by having conversations and empowering other people to have conversations. It just, it brings me a lot of joy. Through rowing, I got introduced through rowing through the veteran space I was working in while going to college. I uh, helped promote other organizations. So somebody said, hey, come check out our program. And I said, okay, but I ended up checking my now husband out more than I did the program. So I just kind of kept coming back. I met him on a Thursday. Our first date was Friday and we've just been together ever since. So I've stuck with rowing because that was his thing and now I love it and it's our thing. So what's one thing that you would tell people that are depressed, that are, I don't see any way out, and they are thinking about taking their life away? A lot of it has to deal with the hurt, the constant hurt, the constant overwhelming feeling of hurt, right? And we all have those days where we're super overwhelmed, but if we're not communicating our needs to other people and reaching out to other people and giving other people a chance to show us love, then we're, we're not really giving ourselves what we need to. So the biggest thing is uh, vocalizing. You may not know what you need, but if you if you tell somebody what you need, right? Be, telling someone that you're thinking about suicide, that you're so overwhelmed and you're in so much pain that you'd rather be dead than alive, is hard, it's a hard conversation. But at least telling people around you saying, I'm really overwhelmed right now, we're giving other people the opportunity to try and step in and help. Um, we're always gonna be in crappy situations. Life throws us tons of junk but uh, there's always people out there that you won't even know strangers that are willing to help get you past those painful moments in life so really just reaching out for help and communicating that you have a need maybe not even knowing what that need is but just that you have a need that needs to be met what do you think that's a such a huge issue in the veteran community I think it's a big issue in the veteran community when it comes to suicide because there's a huge disconnect, especially when you're in the service and you leave the service. Uh, for for example, I was in the Marine Corps, so I'm in the Marine Corps and I say, oh, I'm a Marine, right? Society is like, oh, 
your Marine, oh, that's awesome. Thank you for your service, like all the things, right? And then you leave the military and there's kind of like this identity crisis where you're like, okay, well, I was a Marine, but who am I now? And you're almost going through this whole new phase of life like you did as a teenager. Think back as a teenager, right? But yeah, hopefully had parents or support system that were paying for your roof and getting you the food and all that thing. Well, now you're an adult and you're having to deal with that. And a lot of veterans transition, they have families. So it's hard to try and almost rediscover yourself in that phase. And you've lost your family, you've lost the brotherhood, and you're trying to reestablish not only yourself, but your surroundings. And it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to cope with and deal with. And usually the first year, you don't really notice how bad it is. And then after the first year goes by, then it starts hitting a lot heavier and heavier and heavier that, who am I, you know, what am I? And I, I think that also ties into our society. We put so much weight on what we do, not who we are. And that's why military, first responders, they have the hardest time transitioning into other jobs because we put so much weight on this what we do. And we almost put people on pedestals based on their career rather than who they are as a person. And I think that that's a huge thing that that's going to take generations to change. Yeah. When people think about the military, the first responders, they think they're strong. Yeah, brave, strong. Like they're not weak. They're not weak-minded. And that's where a lot of times, like when people don't want to ask for help, even in the military, I, I had a physical injury, right? And getting help for a physical injury was a bit of a task sometimes. And hearing from people like, oh, you know, you're just faking it or oh, suck it up. But, you know, we we don't just suck things up. We can't just swallow them down and deal with it. If we don't have the skills, if we don't have the support system, we don't have the tools to help us get through. Some of the things that life throws at us are just not things that one person can get through on their own. We're meant to be a society. We're meant to be a community and live amongst people, but we're not treating it like that as a society. That's true, right? So your, your services are based here in Oklahoma City? I actually travel all over the U.S., so I um, pretty much will go anywhere that'll have me come talk to them or train. I get to work with a lot of great nonprofits and uh, federal agencies and stuff as well. So uh, one nonprofit in particular, the Wounded Warrior Project, they sponsor ASSIST, which is Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training. It's an international-based um, company who all their programs are evidence-based. It's taught in multiple different languages. It's my favorite. I'm a little biased because I am an instructor. But uh, the Wounded Warrior Project will actually sponsor to do tons of those trainings during Suicide Prevention Month. So I'm I'm just honored that I get to donate my time and I get to travel to multiple different states to train people to have the conversation about suicide. That's awesome. So people that want to help, that maybe they recognize some of the signs of somebody that's depressed, uh, what is one of the things that you recommend to them? So I think if if the person who's wanting to help somebody who is feeling down and depressed and just so overwhelmed, the big thing is just talking to them. Uh, being a human, showing them some grace, showing them some love because we live in a society where we're fast paced, fast paced, everything fast, 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 right? That sometimes just taking that slow second to talk to somebody, to listen, to hold the door open for them, to smile at them. It's the little things that really build up and make a huge difference. There's different things that people who want to help and uh, maybe don't feel comfortable helping just yet or not sure what to do. There's tons of trainings out there. Uh, Assist and Safe Talk are two different trainings through Living Works. It's an international company. So it's taught in, I believe, 36 different languages. It's all over the world. You can catch one of those trainings. There's also a lot of great programs through the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. They have Talk Saves Lives. Um, there's QPR, it's another quick one. Uh, definitely my favorite is Assist though. Uh, I'm a little biased, I'm an instructor for Assist. But I do also teach Safe Talk, so Assist is two eight hour days, but it really helps take people, because the big thing is, is that we're scared to talk about suicide. We have this conception that, oh, if I say, if I say suicide or talk about suicide, it's gonna put the idea in their head, but really it's not, it's out there. Um, I like to quote my husband where he says, there's no original idea anymore in the world. He doesn't say that in regards to suicide, but he says that in regards to a lot of things that you're not going to put the idea in their head, but what you are going to do is you're going to open up that conversation to where they know that it's okay. Uh, usually when I do interventions and somebody is it's so overwhelmed, they're thinking about suicide. And once I ask them, you know, hey, have you been thinking about suicide? Or when was the last time you thought about suicide? There's this like, almost like a sigh of relief, like, okay, 
it's no longer taboo, I can talk about it. So that's something that when it comes to talking about depression, talking about feelings overwhelming, it starts with us. It starts with us changing our culture, changing our society by even just telling other people when we're overwhelmed, right? Because then there's gonna be those people who are like, you know, oh, you're overwhelmed, why are you telling me this? Because we're talking about it. We're not making the topic taboo anymore. So by talking about suicide, by saying the S word, that's gonna really help open that conversation. That person's gonna know that they can come to you, that they can talk to you about that topic, and that you're not gonna be judgmental about it. Uh, now, of course, if you say something like, well, you're not thinking about suicide, are you? Uh, that's not helpful or supportive, and that is very shutting down. <laughs> so that's definitely where how you say things uh, and your words matter. Language is so powerful that the simple thing to help people is simple acts of kindness and then listening to people. And when you are talking about suicide, say suicide. Be the first one to say it. Take that weight off their shoulders because they're already heavy and bogged down by all the other things that life has thrown at them. So that's one uh, one big thing to help. Listening, talking to people, uh, taking extra trainings, learning more about the topic, you know, talking about it with your families, with your kids, with your friends, d different things like that. It's really going to help open us up to talk about it a lot more as a society and that's going to help in the long run and that's going to help other people feel like they're heard and that it's important and it's okay to be overwhelmed and to talk about it. It's not okay to stay that way. So that's where we got to work on building skills, um, finding coping mechanisms. Great examples like peer support programs are a phenomenal, no matter what the peer support is. So in Missouri, they have a lot of beekeeping. They have lots of beekeeping and peer supports there. In Oklahoma, one of our peer support programs, we have a rowing program. Uh, rowing programs range from uh, private parties coming in here buying a boat, buying private lessons to corporate teams, but we have a sponsorship where we have a veterans rowing program. So veterans can come out, they can get therapeutic, being on the water, right? Just being around other veterans is part of that peer support. But then that physical activity too, because physical activity is a great reducer in depression. It gets your body moving, it gets your mind moving, and it gets you moving forward. So it's uh, a lot of great aspects and peer support programs, especially peer support programs of the physical nature. So, so yeah, uh, just even having conversations uh, from the first part of having an intervention and talking to someone, asking them if they're thinking about suicide, and then saying yes, and kind of working through all the things that life throws at people, right? A lot of it is just getting it off their chest saying this is all the stuff that's overwhelming and trying to find ways like okay what's the top three things that are overwhelming for you and how can we make changes that can reduce that overwhelming feeling so most of the interventions i do even just people just talking about what's going on instantly feel so much better um, so that's kind of like a like a reward in it right As you're talking to someone and you're helping them get out of the darkness and find light it's like oh this is so cool like I'm, you know, bringing light to this person to, to love, to want to be alive again. But there is that dark part of suicide prevention where some people just basically come to the darkness. Uh, the darkness is overwhelming. We can easily get sucked into it and live in it. Uh, if we're not putting up safeguards, if we're not uh, reaching out to other people, if we're not the ones reaching out to other people, you know. Um, again, a lot of it goes back to our, our culture and our society and how we view things and how we see things. It just, it makes a huge difference in talking to people, that taboo topic, uh, treating people, you know, uh, prioritizing people and who they are, not what they do, you know, validating people versus spending so much time trying to relate, which comes across as like one-upping. I'm sure we all have that person in our lives where you tell them a story and it's like, let me tell you a story of equal or greater craziness, right? So just communicating with people and like letting them tell their story and just say, man, that sucks. That totally sucks. Uh, sometimes that's all people need is just to hear that their feelings are validated in that situation. So one of the things that uh, we're here, beautiful boathouse district is the rowing program that we have. It's a VA grant that's given to us rowing and the program is called freedom rose through that program. There's cities all across America, that it allows veterans an opportunity to come out and row. So you get the therapeutic of just being on the water. Sometimes it's great just to take a single out and just be on the water by myself and just think, like, I rode this boat here. I am floating here because of the actions that I am taking and taking it all in, the beautiful views, 
of downtown Oklahoma City, the, the breezy air, it's, it's a great experience. But the other great part of our program is the peer support part is that coming into this environment and having people from similar branches of service or different branches of service, having people to, you know, talk trash with back and forth and relate to on different levels and just having that support, you know, people mispractice because of depression. Hey, depression kicked in. I just I can't get up. Like, it's an overwhelming day for me. I'll be there at the next practice. Okay, great. And then we also know, uh, we start developing those relationships and checking in on those people like, hey, it's not like you did not come to practice or why you've been bailing on practice the past week. When are you gonna come back out? So really that act of reaching out to people, checking in on people. Um, our program I think is, I, it's, it's unique, we're all unique, right? But in a sense that our program, we focus a lot more on the peer support aspect than that we're trying to be Olympic competitors. And after we get done rowing, after we're in the sun and the heat, people just wanna go chill out and go get some food and have some drinks together and laugh together and move on. Um, it's it's kind of crazy thinking back to how I got involved in rowing and why I stayed for rowing and then you know all my bridesmaids I met through rowing <laughs> so you know my husband I met through rowing so there's that that you just you form these bonds and you form these relationships and there's nothing that can replace that connectedness that community that you get from peer support groups especially groups like rowing where you're out in the environment you're getting the sun you're getting the water but you're getting your time around fellow human beings that have a sense of where you've been and can relate and understand to you. So it's a really great program. I encourage anyone to check it out. Reach out to US Rowing, seeing if there's one in your city. And if there's not, uh, talking about starting one in your city and what it's gonna take. Yeah, it definitely uh, creates the bonding and creates that spirit. We go back to find that spirit mm -hmm. oh, that we miss. I think that's, that's one of the key uh, scenes. Yeah. Once we leave. Yeah, I, I and like, the wind is so quiet, right? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, and you, you go and we all have our own boot camps for basic trainings. You know, for the Marine Corps boot camp, we take away the I, the me, the mine. You really learn to just be a team and rely on everyone that's around you. And you leave that environment, you leave that family, that bond, that brotherhood, that sisterhood, whatever you want to call it you leave that and you transition into something else. And while you're trying to figure out what that something else is, there's always a part of people that I think that miss a little bit of that. You have a, a structured life. Some of it is a pain in the butt, but there's also the part of it where there's always someone you can rely on. There's always someone you can go to. There's tons of people who are around you. So you either have people to go to to complain about the other people, you know, or you have people to go to that you can hang out with. And that's what I think that we recreate in peer support groups. There's people that you can bond with and then there's always that person that you don't like that we always end up talking crap on. <laughs> but it gives people a sense of belonging, a sense of um, that that group connection is again. People that are disabled that might have, you know, I'm missing a limb but might have some kind of back problem. They don't have to be afraid. Yeah. Be All part right. of it, right? Yeah, our rowing program is adaptable. So there's a Paralympic rowing. So just like there's Paralympic rowing for uh, any athlete, we have that in our program. So uh, a lot of times there's some misconceptions on what rowing is, you know, how do you row? So I really just encourage people to check it out, try it out. Um, if you have an injury, we work with what that injury is. If uh, it's a, a serious injury, if you have a spinal injury, if you're missing a limb, there's adaptive equipment, there's different ways to row, there's different boats to get you in, different seats, there's all kinds of things to, to really make it fit for you. And you know, a lot of times we think of adapted, right, people with, uh, with physical disabilities, right? You know, oh, okay, you need this because of your disability. Well, sometimes we're just people and nothing is a cookie cutter. No boat is gonna fit you like every other boat, right? And there's also those mental disabilities that, you know, we've, we've been in a boat before with someone with severe vertigo. It's not a good idea. Felt really bad for her. <laughs> so just trying to figure out like what, what works for that person, right? If you have someone uh, who gets really stressed out really easily, being able to communicate that to your team and then having a team leader being able to help lead you and guide you through it. So I'd say don't, don't be scared to try it, whether you have a physical or a mental disability or something where you're just like, my, my knee aches, you know, um, 
I'm, I'm anxious, whatever that is, just really communicate that with people because it's surprising how adaptive that rowing can be for anybody. So yeah, definitely, definitely check it out. It's been life changing. For me. So US rowing, uh, there's on the US rowing website, you wanna look for Freedom Rows and it's rows like R-O-W-S, so Freedom Rows. And you can reach out there and they can always contact me and I can kind of put them in contact with uh, the representative at US Rowing as well to make sure that they get connected to their local, local space. Amazing viewers, your support is invaluable. Your like, shares, and engagement have channeled into a vibrant community, and we're deeply grateful. Thank you. If you have been enjoying our content and want to see more, there's a simple way to support us. Hit that big red subscribe button below this video. Subscribing not only keeps you updated on our latest release, but I also show you appreciation for what we do. And some exciting news or next promo, it reveals fantastic products we have crafted with you in mind. From exclusive merchandise to cutting edge tool, we got it all. By purchasing a product, you become a part of our mission to deliver valuable content and take this community to new heights. Every purchase helps us invest in better equipment, expand our team, and explore new possibilities. These products are your things that you own. They are a symbol of your support and love for what we do. So stay tuned for the next video. Check the links below and grab what catch your eyes. Let's embark on this journey together. Thank you for inspiring us. You turn this channel into a community, not just a platform. So let's continue to to create and soar together. Stay tuned. That, that day is just a sad day. We still have sad days. You asked why we're here. And one of the reasons that I chose this location to be interviewed is because not only does it represent what our country lost in the lives that were lost here that day, but we still continue to have losses every day. According to the VA, there are 22 lives per day of veterans who use the, mental, uh, the VA's mental health services that commit suicide. And suicide is it's a, 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 a permanent solution to a temporary problem. The people that die at their own hands, even with assisted suicides, they're in a sense dying at their own hands are, excuse me, I'm watering up here. They're missing things and the people that are around them, that love them, are missing things. And I coined a phrase not very long ago that for each suicide, the world skips a beat as it tries to find its groove again. And if, if we think of a vinyl record and we bump the, the, the needle or cause the needle to jump, that's like, and I'm not trying to uh, make 
small of suicide. Thank you.